You know that as you add information to your document, Word automatically flows that information from one page to the next. How paragraphs behave as your information transitions from one page to the next is entirely within your control, as you discover in this video. It is only in the very shortest of documents that you don't need to worry about how Word flows your text from one page to the next. Fortunately, Word allows you a fair amount of control over how that flowing occurs. You can see this by selecting the paragraph or paragraphs that you want to affect, and then you need to display the paragraph dialog box. You do this most easily by displaying the home tab of the ribbon and then clicking the small icon in the bottom right corner of the paragraph group. When you do, the paragraph dialog box is displayed. What you want to do is take a look at the line and page breaks tab. It is these four options at the top of the dialog box that I want to fully explain in this video as each of them affect how paragraphs behave as your text flows from one page to another. When you look at the options available, there's a very good chance that the first option, Widow Orphan Control, is already selected. To understand what this control does, it's really helpful to understand exactly what widows and orphans are. In typographical terminology, widows and orphans are closely related, and I don't mean any pun in saying that. These terms refer to one line, and sometimes two lines of a paragraph left by itself on a page. Let me show you what I mean in this document. I've got a paragraph down here near the bottom of the page. You can see it right here. I've got Widow Orphan Control turned off for this four line paragraph. Now watch what happens as I press enter a few times just before the paragraph. Note that as the paragraph is pushed off the bottom of the page, the last line appears at the top of the next page. This single line by itself at the top of the page is referred to typographically as a widow. If I keep pushing the paragraph downward, notice that eventually there is only a single line that is left at the bottom of the page. This line is referred to as an orphan. As you are working with your document, you want to avoid both widows and orphans. They break up the flow of the text and they tend to distract the reader. This is why the widow orphan control setting is normally turned on by default. If I go back up here a little bit, I have a four line paragraph right here. It's essentially the same length as a paragraph that we were previously looking at. The difference is that this paragraph has Widow Orphan Control turned on. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to press enter a few times and I'll scroll down so that you can see the bottom and the top of the page. And what I want you to do is watch how the paragraph behaves as we keep pressing enter and get to the bottom of the page. Now notice when I press enter right now. What happens is it didn't move a single line to the next page. It moved two lines to the next page. And when I press enter again, it doesn't leave a single line at the bottom of the page. It moves those two additional lines down to the top of the next page. The bottom line is that Widow Orphan Control instructs Word to not allow a paragraph to break across pages such that a single line appears by itself either at the bottom or top of the page. You should understand that this setting affects only multi-line paragraphs. If your paragraph consists of a single line, then Word allows it to appear at the bottom of a page by itself or at the top of a page. If you think about it, certain paragraphs naturally belong with other paragraphs. For instance, Headings belong with the paragraphs that follow them, or a signature line belongs with the explanation line that may be after it. Another common one is that a figure belongs with the caption that may follow it. 
Word makes it easy to keep certain paragraph pairings together. In fact, that's the purpose of the keep with next control. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to type two very short lines in here. And I'll say line one. And then the next line I'll just say line two. Two very short paragraphs, very short lines within this document. Now I'm going to position the insertion point within the first paragraph that I typed here. And I'm going to go ahead and display the paragraph dialog box. And on the line and page breaks tab, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on keep with next right there and click on OK. Notice that a little dot appears at the left side of that paragraph that I just changed the setting on. Now watch what happens as I uh, press enter a few times to make this transition from one page to the next. When I press enter here, notice that it moved both paragraphs together. It kept them together because I have that keep with next setting set for the paragraph that says line one. There is something that you should be aware of when it comes to the keep with next setting. And that's that you should use it sparingly. You should only apply it to individual paragraphs where it makes sense. If you apply it to a bunch of paragraphs or to all of the paragraphs in your document, you may not get the results that you expect. In fact, Word may end up ignoring the setting entirely because it can't keep that many paragraphs together on the same page. So make sure that you apply it sparingly only to those paragraphs that need to have it set. For some types of documents, you may not want your paragraphs to flow smoothly from one page to the next. Instead, you may want to make sure that any given paragraph appears all on one page or another. I require this type of formatting quite often in letters, legal documents, and proposals. This is where the keep lines together setting comes in handy. When this setting is applied to a paragraph, Word will do its best to make sure that the paragraph is kept as a whole on a single page. Take a look at this page where I have a six line paragraph near the bottom of the page. Right now, it is all on the first page, but if I add text further up the page, Word will flow this paragraph piece by piece to the next page, as you saw earlier in this video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, place the insertion point within this paragraph, and I'm going to display the paragraph dialog box again. And on the line and page breaks tab of the dialog box, I'm going to choose the keep lines together option right there. When I click on OK, you'll notice that a dot appeared in the left margin next to the first line of this paragraph. Now watch what happens as I press enter a few times and approach the bottom of the page. Everything is still on the first page here, but when I press enter again, the entire paragraph moved to the second page. And if I go back up here and I delete a paragraph, then it moves back up to the first page. Word does its best to keep this paragraph all together on a page. When using the keep lines together setting, the same caveat applies that I mentioned about the keep with next control. You probably want to use it sparingly. You can certainly apply it to all of your paragraphs, but if your paragraphs tend to run quite long, Word may ignore the setting. This occurs if it is impossible to place the entire paragraph on a single page because it is too long for the available space on the page. So what sort of paragraphs should you apply it to? Typically, I'll apply it to headings or to indented block quotes or sometimes to numbered and bulleted lists. Applied judiciously, the Keep Lines Together setting can make your document more useful to the reader. The final control you need to look at is one that allows you to force a page break before a paragraph. As you create your document, you may see certain types of paragraphs that should always begin at the top of a page. For instance, you may use a certain paragraph format for section headings. If your page design calls for all sections to begin at the top of a page, 
you need to come up with a way to ensure that this always happens. You can approach this task in two ways. The first is to search for each section heading and manually insert a page break before each of those headings. This process can be time consuming, however. Formatting the paragraph so that it always begins on a new page is much easier. All you need to do is turn on the page break before setting for the heading. Now notice that I've got a heading here. If you want this heading to start on a new page, all I need to do is apply the setting to the paragraph. So I'm going to go ahead and display the paragraph dialog box and on the line and page breaks tab, I'm going to go ahead and say page break before right here. And when I do that and click on OK, notice what happened in the document. That heading jumped to the top of the next page. We can go back up here and we see that we haven't pressed enter anywhere in here to move it down. And we don't have a page break in here to indicate it should go to the top of the next page. We have set it for the paragraph itself to indicate that that paragraph always ought to begin at the top of a new page. In this video, I've shared with you how Word flows text from one page to another. And I've shown you how you can affect that flowing by changing paragraph level settings. If you find in your documents that your text isn't flowing smoothly from page to page, make sure that you check the paragraph dialog box, paying particular attention to these four settings on the line and page breaks tab. I hope you found this information helpful and that now you know even more about how to format your documents in Word. If you did find it helpful, be sure to click the subscribe button below and click the bell so that you receive notification when new videos are added to the Word Tips channel. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me today.